Hey, let's talk about the prayer of submission, consecration, and dedication. Romans 12, Paul says, Brothers and sisters, in light of all I have shared with you about God's mercies, I urge you to offer your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice to God, a sacred offering that brings Him pleasure. This is your reasonable, essential worship. The prayer of submission, consecration, and dedication is a very important prayer that we pray. There are many competing agendas, thoughts, and feelings that seek to alter the roadmap of our lives. 1 Corinthians 6, he says, You do not own yourself. You have been purchased at a great price. So use your body to bring glory to God. In the Garden of Gethsemane, we find an example of Jesus praying this kind of prayer. And it always involves the wrestling down of our will and our plans versus God's will and God's plan for our lives. This kind of prayer involves the phrase, not my will, but your will be done, O God. We often invert the purpose of our lives. Instead of working as a way to love and serve others, we turn work into a way to be loved and served by others. Instead of being attentive to that which God wants us to do, we are stubborn and determined to do what we want to do and then ask God to bless just that. The battle always starts in the mind, but the target is to occupy our heart. As one writer declares, there is no deception as deceiving and blinding as self-deception. And the only place where self-deception is exposed and unmasked is when we present ourselves to God as a living sacrifice through this prayer of submission, consecration, and dedication. This kind of prayer focus on a few areas. The gateways to our heart, which are our eyes and our ears. The battleground to our heart, which are our minds. And our heart as the most prized possession. Why our hearts? The Bible reminds us to guard diligently and attentively over your heart because from your heart flows the very forces of life, which simply means the very things that will control our direction, actions, and words. 2 Corinthians 10 says, The weapons of the war we're fighting are not of this world, but are powered by God and effective at tearing down strongholds erected against His truth. We are demolishing arguments and ideas, every high and mighty philosophy that pits itself against the knowledge of the one true God. We are taking prisoners, every thought, every emotion, and subduing them into obedience to the Anointed One. So part of this prayer is to pray over our thoughts and asking God to remove the thoughts and opinions false perceptions, ideologies and question, that questions the truth of God. We call into obedience every emotion and feeling and subdue them into obedience to God, His Word and His will for our lives. And then to clothe ourselves with the mind and thoughts of God as found in Scripture. Then we pray over our ears, for our ears to have an attentiveness to hear the whispers of heaven and to refuse to make our ears available to the lies, deceit, gossip, and the pollution of this world. We pray over our mouths that God would set a guard before our mouth and a watch at the door of our lips, that the words we speak that day will be life-giving, encouraging, fruit-bearing and filled with praise and not murmuring, that our mouths will be of service to God and not of evil. Then we pray over our hearts. David prayed like this in Psalm 26. Lord, you can scrutinize me. Refine my heart and probe my every thought. Put me to test and find what is true. In Psalms 139, God, I invite you to search and gaze into my heart. Gaze into my heart. Examine me through and out. Find everything that may be hidden within me. Put me to the test and sift through all my anxious cares and lead me to a place of everlasting life. We ask the Holy Spirit that He will illuminate any offense or sin that we are blinded to, confessing and asking forgiveness, not to neglect to be mindful to forgive those who have sinned against us, because to the measure that we are willing to forgive, can we expect to receive forgiveness? 
It is in this prayer that we ask God to order our steps for the day, to remind us that our work, our gifting and ability was given in service to others and to be an instrument in the hand of God in the restoration and the healing of the world around us. We pray for God to remind us that our work is worship unto Him and that He is our ultimate reward. Jesus framed the mission of our lives when He said, I have come to do the will of the one who has sent me. This is at the very core of the prayer of submission, consecration, and dedication. This prayer carries the simple declaration. We can hold both our hands out and we can declare this. I hold my hands up as a symbol of surrender and consecration. I surrender my preference, fears, habits, and defense. I take hold off the old self and put on the new because you say, God, put on the new self, which is being corrupt, old self corrupted by the old and put on the renewed mind, put on the renewed self created to be like God in righteousness and holiness. Then we open our hands and we begin to stretch it out before us, declaring, I hold my hands open as a symbol of generosity and service to others. I am a steward of all you have given me. My time, resources, talent, privilege are to be of service. I choose to live a life open-handed, a life a, 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 in a close-fisted society. I declare that chains are broken as I serve those around me. My service is against violent assault, greed, and fear. Then we physically stretch our hands towards heaven and we can declare I choose to pick up the Great Commission and hold my hands forward as a symbol of embracing your kingdom mission. I declare that our church will live as bro uh, brokers of hope of all, the lost, the lonely, the powerless, the powerful, young and old. We will remain standing as a city on a hill, empowering to live out the mission of Jesus. Now, this is a powerful prayer. And scripture says it's pleasing to God and it's our reasonable, our basic starting line with God because it aligns us for our day and it's our reasonable service that pleases God.